In this video, I'm going to be explaining short vowels in the Arabic language. Unlike uh, English, we have in English we have five vowels: a, e, i, o, u. In Arabic, we only have three, and they are what what is known as fetha, dhamma, and kasra. So, let's let's first of all just um, understand how they're written. So in front of us we have the, the letter Fa and when we add vowels in Arabic it's different to English. We don't add them after the letter. We add it on top of the letter. So Fatha will be written as follows. It's written with a line on top. Like that. Adamma will be as follows it's like a small wow and we have the kesra which is like a fetha but on the bottom so let's assume that this is the line where we write the fetha would be on top of the letter dhamma would be on top as well and kesra would be on the bottom so fetha, dhamma, kasra. So that's just the terminology, and inshallah we'll find out how they're actually pronounced. So we have the first, the first haraka, which is fetha. Now, for example, when we say the word cat, notice the a sound, a. It's a a sound, cat, a. That's the same sound of a fetha. Now we have here I've transliterated cat into Arabic. So we have the calf here, the letter, so it makes the same sound, the k sound. And then we have the the ta, which is equivalent to the t in English. So this says cat. So notice the vowel is on top, not after it, as in cat. And obviously in English we write from left to right, while in Arabic we write from right to left. So in English, when we read a word, we read it this way. In Arabic, it's actually upwards like that. So we read the first letter and what harakat it has first, the second letter, what harakat it has, and so on. Now, similarly, um, back, the word back, so it's the same sound, ah, uh, back. Now, just one thing to note is when we say this sound, the ah uh, sound, um, you'll notice your mouth is open, wide, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Now let's just practice. We have here a word in Arabic. So to pronounce this, we have three letters here. We have the the jim, which has the j sound, like for example the word jeep, or jog, or Jupiter. It's a j, it's a j sound, and there's a fatha there. So this will be pronounced as j. Then we have the lamb here. That's equivalent to the letter l in in English like the word look to pronounce the lamb with the fatha it's la so ja la and then finally we have the seen that's equivalent to the the s sound in english so this will be sa so ja la sa ja la sa so ja la sa means he sat and notice we don't elongate. There's no elongation of the ah sound. So we don't say ah. Like in, for example, when we say the word car. Car. It's car. It's not car. So this will be one syllable. That's another syllable. 
and that's in that, that's another syllable. So there's three syllables: je, le, se. Now here, when when we say car, there's there's a, there's an elongation. That's a diff, That's written differently, and we'll explain that later on, inshallah. Just to note, it's just it's a quick sound. So just je, le, se, je, le, se. Not ja, le, se. Or ja, la, se. No, ja, la, se. There's no elongation. Okay, we've reached the dhamma now. So it's a small letter wow. What letter does a dhamma make? It's like the word book. Although there's two letters, both of the, um, there's two O's. Although there's two letters here, it's pronounced like a dhamma. Unlike, for example, the word uh, choose. So when we say choose, there's an elongation there. We say choose, choose. We don't say choose. It's not choose. It's not choose. It's choose. So although in, in English they can actually sound differently, even though they're written the same way, they sound differently. In Arabic we don't, we don't have this. So the way it's written is the way it's pronounced. To transliterate this in Arabic would be the following. Yeah, so we, it's this is the ba, and we have the dhamma. And you'll see there's a, it's going like this. That's just the way it's written. It doesn't really matter if it's like that or like this. It's the same thing. So just one point note there. That's just the script. That's the way the script is. So that's a ba with a dhamma. Notice when I say dhamma, it's very important. Some people actually. They they say they don't say it with a with a dad, they say it with a dal. So they say dum dhamma. It's not dhamma, it's dhamma. Uh, maybe um, non Arabs will find this hard to pronounce, but that's inshallah as you uh, progress in your Arabic studies, and when you actually learn the the um, rules of pronunciation, uh, you will improve on that inshallah. We have here the ba with a dhamma. Followed by the calf, which is the the K, the K sound. So here it's pronounced as book. This letter alone with the dhamma would be bu, bu. So book. Similarly, we have the word in English put. It's put. So there's a u sound that represents the sound that a dhamma makes. Put. Now I didn't transliterate that put because actually there's no p sound in classical Arabic. Those in um, in Iraq, for example, they actually use the the p sound, but actually it's not in the original um, in classical Arabic. So usually when when you pronounce something with a p, it's represented by the ba. Usually. Now let's just uh, practice this. We have a word composed of three letters. Both the first two letters are actually with a dhamma. There's a seam. So we have, if we break this up, there's a seam with a dhamma. Then there's a ba with a, with a dhamma. And there's the dam. So to pronounce this, this is a, has an S sound. So su bu and this is the lamb like the letter l so subul subul now i'm not pronouncing deliberately i'm deliberately not pronouncing the last haraka on this letter because when we get to when we start um going to arabic grammar we'll find out that this actually changes it's the same word it will be the same word but the last letter the haraka or the vowel on the last letter will change depending on the words function in the sentence. Subul means paths. And that's the the plural of the word sabil. Sabil is a path. And this is the plural, paths. Let's get to the kasra. The kasra as we showed you, is a line at the bottom of the letter. And the sound it has 
is like the word sit. So it's like the I in the word sit. So it's an E sound. E. So for example, if I transliterate that into Arabic, it's like that. So you have the, the scene with the kasra, si, and that's the ta, so sit, sit. So for example, we have the following word. It's ma, that's a fatha, so ma, and then the lam, li, and then the kaf, ki. So maliki, maliki. Malik means king. So let me just write this. A king. So let's practice all these together. So the fatha, the dhamma, and the kasra all together. We have a word. Let's practice this word and try to pronounce it. So we have here the kaf with the dhamma. So that would be ku. Then we have the ta with the kasra. This would be t. And then the ba with the fatha would be ba. So ku, t, ba, kutiba. Now kutiba means it was written or it was prescribed. So that's just a brief explanation of the short vowels. And inshallah, in the next lesson, we'll be talking about the long vowels. أشرقت نفسي بنور من فؤادي حينما رددت يا رب العباد